and movie clubbers. We're back in the minivan and we're having a good time. Yep, great time. I'm Brett Gray. Nick Wiggum. And you can find us every week talking at your favorite minivan podcast that takes place in a minivan that talks about movies while sitting in a minivan. It's yep, the only pretty. place that you'll find content like this. Yes, it's, 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 it's riveting. It's absolutely riveting. So here's what we're going to do today. A uh, little bit of a different, but also kind of the same. Uh, we're working really diligently to make these conversations look more and more like the conversations that we have uh, off camera. Yep. So something that I wanted to try today is to welcome you into our minivan by also welcoming you into the, the, the club into the community of things that we do. So usually the way this works is Nick and I will text back and forth. We talk all the time. We'll go see movies throughout the week. And then we play on Tuesdays to kind of be our, our content night where we'll either talk about ideas or execute them and, and, and make them happen. So the goal is to have some fun tonight and really uh, just have a couple topics. So we've got some topics to share with everybody in the movie minivan movie club. Uh, but before we get started, we wanted to share with you one of our hobbies. And outside of going to see movies and hanging out, we also enjoy a little, little bourbon here. So as you can see in my uh, reflected uh, selfie camera, we've got a little bottle of bourbon here for you. We've got Russell's Reserve, 10 years old, 90 proof. Uh, this is this is good stuff here, and we're going to enjoy it. We're going to have a little little sip and have a conversation as we talk about some of the things that have been happening in movie culture. Uh Shout out to a couple of, of people. We're a local channel. We're a small channel, so we support other content creators. Shout out to Casey Liquors for hooking Casey? us up with the bottles here uh, over off Cypress North Houston in our area of Houston. I also shout out to a friend of the channel, uh, Cinnabourbon. Uh, go on TikTok and check out Cinnabourbon because Cinnabourbon's got some very cinematic takes on bourbon lovers. So... Nick, I'm gonna hook you up here. Just oh, little, thank little you, sir. Sick. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we've we've got quite the uh, agenda for us today. We've caught several movies together recently. Uh, some hot trailers dropped this last uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, I think a lot of moviegoers are excited. We got a, a kind of a look into what the summer movie slate looks like. It's a little bit of a dry season right now, but of course, you know we've got Madam Web coming out, so there's nothing to get more excited about than that. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's going to be a good one. So, hmm, I'm excited about the movies. I'm also excited about this Russell's Ten. I've had this quite a few times lately, and I like on on the nose. That's good, sweet. And then when you go for that taste, got good 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 color. Yep, I like it. Uh, it's good. I like it. It's good. It's very good. It doesn't smooth. It doesn't have a huge burn on the end of it. Uh, I can't claim to be the bourbon or whiskey aficionado that the folks at Casey Liquors or over at Cinnabourbon can be, uh, but this is good, and it kind of reminds me of some of the movies that we've seen recently. Uh, look for it on the channel soon. We're going to be dropping a drive-by movie review of Argyle. Argyle. Uh, but while we were talking about it, we got the chance to see it on opening night. I have my thoughts about it. Rotten Tomatoes has their thoughts about it. What were your thoughts, Nick? Uh, my initial thought as we left the theater, I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was a fun, it makes for a fun date night. Uh, there's some genuinely funny moments that are laugh out loud funny uh, that are orchestrated that way. I think it's one of those movies that kind of suffers because the trailer didn't really uh, portray accurately exactly what kind of movie you were getting into. And... I'm not going to lie, the first trailer I saw, I really thought that Argyle was going to be the cat. Yeah. And it wasn't the cat. He's not the spy master that I thought he was. Yeah, I I, uh, I told you, I had this movie spoiled to me. And again, we're in the minivan, so there's no spoilers here. So if you wanted to see this movie, go see it and hang out. We don't rock in a minivan with spoilers, so we just talk about the movies that we see. I read a tweet that was like a screen capture of when the movie was first greenlit for production of like writer with it uh, you know argyle the movie about a writer who has amnesia uh you know becomes as possible like oh i i know the, the, the twist already that said i did find 
the the twists and turns pretty enjoyable. I think the big thing that I had problems with it was I thought it's a little long for yeah, a little the long. level of simplicity. Side note on this. Our wives actually did a little bit of a, a ladies' night last night, it's and they a, a tradition got to go see uh, Mean Girls, the musical version, uh, in theaters now. Uh, what did Miley think of the movie? She enjoyed it. She said it was funny. She her one thing that she told me was uh, that if you hadn't watched the original, which I don't know what person hasn't seen Mean Girls, that you probably wouldn't get as much enjoyment. So maybe like a younger audience that wants to watch something new and they. I have no idea about this classic, the cinematic classic that is Mean Girls, which is a funny movie. I'm not hating on it, but uh, just the fact that it's, you know, 20 years old now, yeah. uh, that you you wouldn't get the same level of respect out of it. Do you know what Jessica thought about it? Of course. I always want to know she what Jessica She sent me a movies. text in the middle of the movie, and she said, this is painful. Oh. This is awful. Wow. She thought it sucked. Now, to be fair... You are talking about a beloved classic. Uh, Tina Fey did an amazing job in the original. I know she's, I think she's in it. I've seen her in the trailer. Um, but Jessica hated it. Oh. She thought it was ter terrible. She said, had she not gone out like for a ladies' night, she would have left. So that's funny. So our wives have very different tastes because after Wonka, yeah. I know your wife loved it. And my yep. wife said, meh, it was okay. See, so... Uh, she Jessica told me she's like I wanted to go see uh, Mean Girls because last time we saw the movie I wanted to watch I wanted uh, Miley to have her movie and I didn't want to be like the person dominating like the movie choice but she's like it it was just terrible she said it was like watching a really bad episode of Glee mm. she's like the the production value wasn't as high but I I also think that's just one of those things where you talk about leaving beloved classics alone like. I'm not a big fan of The Office getting a reboot because yeah, don't, when they're don't good, don't touch those masterpieces. Leave them. Like Regina George is, oh yeah, is an all-time character. Like let let her be. Rachel McAdams, even as guys, George. like you can't sit with us. Yes. has been used or we wear pink on Fridays. And she said, "Totally kill Caesar." And like, <laughs> like, like, like the movie is genuinely a funny movie. It's very funny. And so and for so many women. It's like one of their favorite movies. A lot of them, it may be their favorite movie. And so when you do something like this, and I know even talking to our wives before they went to see it, some of them didn't realize that it was like a, a musical about them trying to make a play. Uh, some of them thought it was a genuine sequel. So I can imagine there's probably a lot of people that were confused oh, yeah, about sure. the, the, the theme of that. Yeah, so the, so the reason I bring it up as we're talking about Argyle is I told Jessica, because we were at your son's birthday party. When the girls decided, hey, we're going to go see Mean yeah. Girls. So they're all asking me, like, hey, should we go see this? And I'm like, I mean, it's a ladies movie, so it's probably more catered to you. I wouldn't go see it. It's not my yeah, first yeah. choice. Uh, but then Jessica got home after watching Mean Girls last night. And she was like, I literally would have rather watched anything in theaters. <laughs> and I told her, actually, ironically, at the theater they went to, there's only six other movies. And I was like... You would have liked every one of those movies better than this. Wow. And I wouldn't be surprised by that. Just based off, I, I know her taste a little bit more. Uh, and I told her, I thought that she would have really liked Argyle. Because it's got a female protagonist. It has a lot of like fun, quirky humor. It never takes itself too seriously. Uh, and I think that's a, a strong suit. I just know that my, my I was advertised a, a spy movie. Uh, maybe a little more of like a stylized colorful spy movie so not as like surreal as like a, a bond or a jason Bourne. not in the like vanities of fiction or like realism it was gonna be kind of dressed up with the color palette but i think it was very very serious uh too too much it should have been more comedic and the third act is bonkers yeah and hilarious if, if if you're if you can hang on it's really great uh, the characters, the acting's really good. Uh, I was I was pretty surprised. Yeah, I mean, it. I think it's a good date night movie. It's a good, if you want to wait for it to come on Apple, which it will eventually, uh, streamer movie. Pop, now, get some popcorn on the couch. So, so the get wife. this, though. Get this. I checked on Rotten Tomatoes. The audience score, 72%. That, that sounds about right for me. Yeah. High 60s, low 70s, uh, I think was a good... The critic score. 
27%. I saw that. Very wrong. Before we watched it, I didn't tell tell you this until after. I had seen that the people were saying it was like the worst movie of the year, worst movie in several years. Uh, I didn't feel that after watching it. Worst movie of the year? It's February. I know. I know. (laughs) I, I think like one thing that you should know beforehand is like if you're expecting to go in and see uh the born henry cavill is like this super spy throughout the movie he's he's not in it very much no well the the freaking movie poster is him and dua lipa yeah and and they're in the first scene together and then after after the first two minutes of the movie they're not in the movie together ever i don't think dua lipa's in the movie at all after that nope that's it and then you have, now to be fair, Henry Cavill, the parts that he's in, they're really, oh, yeah. really funny. And I think it was a very smart cast of him to be in that role. Um, and spoiler alert, uh, maybe they're making a franchise with yeah, the yeah. way that it was ended. It's connected to like the, everything's got to have a universe connected to Kingsman. Yeah. Which I'm, I'm kind of cool with like yeah, yeah. it being like comedy or, you know, a little bit funny. Uh, maybe every movie ties into uh, some sort of. Uh, like spy movie that'd be kind of funny if after all of it it kind of well and the somewhere. thing with like uh, Kingsman is like they have it's like a historical fiction so you have the backdrop of yeah, like yeah, actual yeah. events that have happened so you could you have a lot of uh, potential to play with with that franchise so uh, in those movies I enjoyed the ones that I've seen I've seen the other three that have come out so Yep. So all in all, I I, I think this will come out in, in the review we drop a little bit later. But for me in our, our drive by minivan or drive by reviews, we try to give like a green light to say go see it immediately. Yellow light, wait for streaming. Red light, don't waste your time. I think I think we kind of agreed in the yeah. car. Like yellow light, perfect yellow light. If not, if you, if you if you love going to the movies, there's not a whole lot of good stuff out right now. Go see that. If you need a Valentine's date, uh, I think it's movie. a great date night movie for Valentine's. If you're looking for something to do tomorrow or you're scraping by later on this week when there's not as many crowds. I think it's a it's a, a fine movie to go see. I know there's going to be dropping Madam Web this week. Tomorrow. Uh, you've got Dune coming out soon. A couple of big movies are going to start picking up. Uh, but Argyle might have a better better ticket, better seat. Uh, and it's, a, it's a, a fine movie. Yeah, I don't think you'll regret that decision. Speaking of regretting decisions, what do you think of this Russell's Reserve? I think Russell made the right decision when he chose which to make a Russell and which to make a uh, Kentucky. Yeah, so I I was telling Nick beforehand, again, this is all courtesy of of Cinnabourbon, so if I I mess it up, it's not his fault, it's my fault. But I have been following a lot of content there, and he has been talking about how uh, if you're familiar with Russell's Reserve, you might not be, but you're probably very familiar with wild turkey and wild turkey is you know has the same uh master distiller jimmy russell and what jimmy russell does is he basically goes through the the distillery and picks barrels barrels that are russell's reserve and barrels that are wild turkey uh and so this is a great premium bottle for not a whole lot more in price and i can tell you from my experience maybe we'll do like a taste test one time on the show but I've had uh, wild turkey and like literally I hate it. It it sucks. <laughs> it tastes like I have a stick in my mouth. Uh, whereas like this Russell's Reserve, it's got sweet. It's good. It's got like a nice caramely brown sugar taste. So if you don't like sweet, probably not what I would recommend. Yep. Uh, similar to like Argyle. If you don't like some campy sweet, uh, you know, feel Laughs. good, a little bit like illogical of a movie. Because the third act is really bonkers. Truly bonkers. Uh, but if you're looking for something good, I would totally pick this up. I think most places you can get it for like 30 to $40. Perfect amount. Uh, but again, I'm in, I'm in Houston where there's a lot of people here. We're a prioritized market for bourbon. So There's a lot of people here that need a drink. So <laughs> you can find something anytime, anywhere. So no, just not on Sundays. So speaking of, of Houston and Texas, yeah. we also saw another movie last week, uh, which is not a brand new movie, but it's recent. Came out last year in 2023 uh, by a uh, fan of the show. I hope uh, BJ Novak's BJ. Vengeance uh, takes place in out in the middle of West Texas, a uh, place that we're all very familiar with, and I just thought it was a 
a really fun movie. I remember when I saw the trailer in theaters, uh, we laughed at it because yeah. of the Texas and Texas Tech, you know, Longhorn jokes. I, I thought that was hilarious. And I, I wanted to see it in theaters. Didn't happen because of uh, the late of the year uh, slate. There's so many good movies last year that we didn't get a chance to see in theaters. Finally got around to seeing Vengeance. And it is very thoughtful, very quirky. I'm curious now that we're together to actually talk about it. Like, what did you think of Vengeance? And like, where does that conversation lead us? We It was the perfect movie for us to watch last week. Um I think we've we've been thinking a lot about like life and the meaning and purpose and all these things, uh, and it really touches base on like all the kind of frivolous things we do and the way that we almost use people in our lives to to better our circumstances. Uh, and I thought it was a really well done story that gives the character a full arc as far as like figuring out like there's bigger things when you're telling your story by using other people's story, that's not the right way to do it. Well, um, it, it, it's interesting. So the, the general gist of Vengeance is Hotshot Ben lives in New York, and he is a part of this like, hookup culture. Tinder, Bumble, eHarmony, uh, all, the, all the good stuff. To just meet chicks. And one night, while he's hooking up with some chick, he gets a call that his girlfriend has died. And he... Actually, doesn't have a girlfriend. It's just some girl that told her family that Ben was his her boyfriend. So he ends up flying from New York out to West Texas to go to the funeral. It's so awkward. It's kind of cheesy. It's just like really silly premise of a movie. Yeah, that you've Why seen in, in, in rom coms, yep. but it makes sense in this kind of like serious movie at first. Well, the reason it makes sense is because Ben works for this like podcasting company. And he's been waiting for his moment to share his story, to make an impact, like true crime or like serial or making a murder, or whatever. And suddenly the opportunity falls out of the sky when the brother of this deceased girlfriend says to him, like, she wasn't, she didn't know D. She was murdered. She was murdered. And they're going to solve it. So he realized, oh, this is my chance. I'll make a podcast. I'll make fun of them. And it just has a really interesting meta message for us because we were talking that day. What stuff do we want to create on the channel? What do yeah. we want to do? And how do we tell things that are both interesting but exciting for people to share? And then he literally goes down this. So we're going to shift our metal. focus to uh, murder revenge stories. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, 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 was, it was awesome to see. It has some good lessons, some good laughs. Uh, and it's not too long, so it's not one of the, like, overstays its welcome. Uh, there's some surprise performances I really enjoyed. Um, um, oh, what's his name? Ashton Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher. Ashton I thought was that good. he was excellent. I thought that the casting well, was really well done. Shout is, out. Is it right? I give a lot of credit right? to BJ Novak. I think, while I do think there are some ideas that are a little bit, like, heady, like there's a lot going on. Uh, on like a cerebral level. It's not like a lot of plot points, but just a lot of ideas that, but the character is like being the voice of those ideas of like uh, American culture, individual identity, all these different things that can be a little like obtuse or abstract. And they're dealing with them through a couple of different characters. And then they also come back to like small town USA. And while it is a little bit like stereotypical, it's also nice for me being from Texas yep. To see a movie that like actually demonstrates Texas. It sounds silly to say this. And I know there's somebody that will watch this and think we're just dumb Texas rednecks. Well, go watch Vengeance and you'll understand. When Ben is talking to the family. Like, well, where, if you can go anywhere, where would you go? And they're like, Whataburger. Why? Because it's always there. So there's, there's, you know, Starbucks. There's Sonic. Jack McDonald's, in the Box. This. Yeah. And whatever. Where do you go? And like, well, Whataburger. Why? Because it's always there. And then, like, in one of the moments where they're all having a down moment, they go to Whataburger, and he realizes, like, oh, wow, this is always here. Like, it's not the building. It's the fact that we're always, since it's always open, we can always go there yep. together. And then later on, someone else goes on in the movie, and they go to Whataburger. And it was kind of a funny, nostalgic feeling for me. Because, like, in Houston, Whataburger sucks now. Like, ever since I got bought by the Chicago company... 
their management is slow, the food is not good. But if you go to these small towns in Texas, you will find really good Whataburger. Yeah. And that used to be the case for me to go on a road trip. No, I'm hungry. I've been on the road for four hours. Let's stop and get some good food, get a good burger. I know I'm going to love. And watching them go through that reminded me, oh, that is actually how it would be in a small town in Texas. Yep, it would still be the, the place to be, the place to go. So a lot of, it's a perfect movie if you're from Texas or if you want to kind of get a picture of what different aspects of Texas are like. Uh, he talks to the brother on the phone about flying in and he's like, are you close to Houston? And he's like, that's another country. <laughs> you close to Austin. He's like, Austin? You know, yeah. you got to go over the mountains to get to Austin. Like, yeah. Yeah. How far are you from Dallas? Yeah, so you know where Abilene is? <laughs> yeah, three hours past Dallas? Yeah. Okay, so we're five hours past that. <laughs> yeah, so it's 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 a perfect example of those things with a, a good story that's wrapped into it. Kind of reminded um, me just of a movie we seen saw last year, Hell in High Water, Hell yeah. or High Water, yeah. of showing that West Texas climate. Uh, where I was like, Hell or High Water kind of showed this like underbelly of West Texas. This, I think, shows like a little bit of the underbelly, but the highlight is the people where they say like, when he's like, oh, I love this town. They're like, you love it here? No, this, this place is full of like kerosene and spikes. It's not a good place to be. So I think it's, it's interesting to think of what that like could be or what it talks like but also I, i'm from texas so i've got yep. a little bit of you know i'm rooting texas for the nice. home team but it, it, I, I thought it was really good you mentioned aston kutcher uh you meet him and you're like oh he's gonna be a crazy redneck or like the hippie cowboy yeah, yeah. and he ends up being like super cool and super real so i thought that was like a perfect casting and it sounds silly to say this but that was maybe one of my favorite like supporting roles of last year. Yeah, he did an excellent job. Not to say that he should be up for like the Oscar. No, no. Uh, no. And win it like one of the Roberts should, but uh, like I I really really liked that role. It felt really grounded for him. And just when you're thinking like, oh, we're gonna meet some like bad guy, some villain, or some you know comedic foil, you meet this real person that also adds to some of those layers. So it's a really thoughtful movie. I think that B.J. Novak, who wrote it and directed and starred in it, usually those movies suck because they're trying to do too much. I think, you know, knocked out of the park with that one. And then, of course, you know, of office fame, obviously the talent and writing is there. One of the main writers on The Office. Well, and for him to do something that's not a comedy, but it has some laughable moments, but that's so well thought out. Uh, clearly, he has the talent to pull something like that off. I'd, I'd love to see him do something else. Well, the the, the character of Ben kind of feels like a, a, a real version of Ryan, Ryan in the office. Yeah. Like, Ryan is kind of a caricature of this amalgamation of this just very superficial person. And this character, Ben, goes through this very real, cultural, spiritual almost journey. It's very emotional to come to terms with the level of like superficialness that he has. Uh, and it's just funny to me that that happens in a West Texas town. Cause even like me being from Texas, I wouldn't think of that. But then you've got the grandma being like, you got any family in and Texas? We all know a person like that. You got grandma. any family in Texas? Yeah. Nope. You do now. <laughs> like everybody knows that woman. Yeah. And so that was really special to see places or things that, you know, we've lived out in our life with our family or with friends or you went for spring break to see some family and they became family forever. It was it was fun. It also made me so glad that I'm not a part of like the culture of trying to find a woman today. Oh, like man. as somebody that's about to have been married for 10 years this year, it's like crazy. I'm so glad like I I, I met my wife before the the dating app age. Uh, and I'm just glad that I never had to endure that uh, that circus of a lifestyle. Yeah, I I never had to deal with apps. Don't have a face for apps, so. Nah, you got a face for radio. Yeah. <laughs> I have a life for radio, so that's why I'm on this podcast. Yeah, radio. No, it, radio I, thought, I, I thought it was I thought it was good. It's on Peacock. Uh, is Peacock kind of like slowly becoming like one of the better? platforms so they have probably the most beloved streamable show with the office as far as like 
background. You can watch it and pay attention or you can just have it on in the background as like a comfort. Uh, they have some good movies that they get. They get a lot of movies straight out of the theater. So they got the holdovers, They got the holdovers. Baby. Go check they out had holdovers. Five Nights at Freddy's. They get, they get all sorts of stuff like pretty quick. Uh, and out of all my like non-Netflix streamers, it's probably my favorite one to go to next to like HBO Max. I, I, there's a lot well, of stuff. Well, I'm just there, thinking but... of like, so I have a bit of a, a beef and we're kind of pivoting a little bit off of, off of just talking about Vengeance, but Vengeance got uh, really well reviews from Rotten Tomatoes. 91% of Rotten Tomatoes from the critics, 89% from the fans. So pretty pretty similar I, I think that's pretty accurate for where mm -hmm. i put it i think it's like a high b low a for me so that that feels on 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 brand but there's this interesting like changing of the guard with everyone going to streaming platforms this past week we've learned that like even sports are gonna band together espn fox other people are gonna have this like sports streaming package which is crazy unheard of uh you made this comment to me and I noticed it more and more after you said it to me. But like, there are so many HBO Max properties on Netflix now. Batman is on the the Batman is on there. Uh, there's stuff that I wanted to see that I I bought HBO Max last year to watch. Yep. Now it's on Netflix, and I'm like, hmm. What is on Max today that I absolutely need to have that subscription? If I could just have Netflix and then wait six, twelve months to get it, Netflix has enough. I kind of feel like Peacock and Netflix are what I need. If I didn't have four kids under the age of six, I'd I'd cancel Disney Plus. Yeah. Uh, and then just watch the stuff when it comes out. Um, but like Peacock is the is the one platform that I think is actually doing stuff to create value with some of the original content, giving me access to stuff that's in theaters, or just having like good stuff. So like having The Office and other like local access syndicated TV. It's yeah, it's it's hard. To, I mean, it, we saw. I think we saw streaming peak when like Netflix had everything. Yep. And then now we're like in a stage where like everybody thinks they need their own thing. Sometimes you're lucky if you're already paying. But like, I have AT and T, so I don't have to pay for Max. I mean, I pay for it, but it's already yeah. in my. It's like a free gift, even though I pay way too much money for AT and T. I get it that way. Uh, if I didn't get it that way, I probably wouldn't keep the subscription for HBO Max. Um, but I hope well, that we start to see those things kind of consolidate a little more and cause you're starting to get more mixtures. I think, uh, Paramount and like Hulu or somebody are mixing their shows together. Like you get both in one time or maybe well, it's Paramount. What, what's crazy to me for like Max specifically is I bought Max. I canceled it when it was HBO Max. I got it again on a Black Friday sale where it was like, Two ninety nine a month. Yeah. Uh, now I, I'm on like a base package. I get commercials, all that stuff, which is so annoying. By the way, yeah. my kids. What are you when they When yeah. When <laughs> seriously, sorry. Uh, please monetize our show. Uh, my kids watch commercials like. What what is, what is this? We're watching a movie. Why are you? The, the other, why did you change it? Yeah. What is going? <laughs> why? Uh, so it, it's funny, but. I watch HBO, I watch Max now, and I don't even know if I think it's worth two ninety nine a month. You're getting robbed. <laughs> like, is it, but isn't that crazy to think that yeah. there are people that are paying for the premium ad-free version of it, and they're loving it, and obviously preferences are preferences, but the fact that it's on Netflix, a lot of the, the yeah. big heavy hitters are on Netflix today, and they're not on Max. Uh just the way that like licensing is jumping it has led me to believe like uh like the, the next like dispensation for me of like streaming is if they want it to be a la carte well, i'm just gonna cancel it like as i need it like okay hbo or max doesn't have a show that i need to see in real time i'm gonna cancel it oh paramount doesn't have any new movies up i'm gonna cancel it when i want it back i'll buy it a month because spending Two ninety nine onwards to twenty dollars a month is worse just to hold it. I'd rather just buy it back when I need it and reactivate my account or pause my account, whatever. Uh, I don't know. What are your thoughts there? That's how I feel like it's all going to be. You're going to have one that you have for that month, and then 
for a couple of months until you've exhausted all the shows and movies you want to watch and you're like, I don't really have anything to watch. I'm just scrolling. You want to get I mean, rid of it and move on to the next. I've just got to think that that's where like YouTube went with the NFL channel that they had. And I've got to imagine that sports when they get their streaming platform up. I don't want to watch every single basketball game, yeah. but I'd love to see the Rockets play. Uh, I don't want to see every Texans game, but I would like to see as much football game as I possibly can. I want to see as many college football games as I possibly can. And I don't care to see 162 baseball games of any team. So well, it's I want to get like my local team or a season package. So we've already been to prime. That's where it is. Why wouldn't that be the same case with entertainment of, I want to see these types of shows to where like it gets even more modular and specific to what you want. Where like Disney Plus is kind of a built-in tax for me because I have children. Uh, Netflix has a lot of great stuff with their partnership with DreamWorks. And then Peacock has a huge yeah. wealth of resources for children like, that are actually really, really good. Despicable Me's on there, so it's a it's a must have in my house. So, so it's it's it kind of feels to me like Netflix and uh, Peacock have kind of taken over as the ones. Um, if I can find a really good like DVD set for friends, I would probably cancel Max. That's the only reason yeah, I'm but, keeping it. We've got several Jessica. seasons from from Friends. That's uh, another one. That's just a kind of mindless. You can watch yeah, yeah. comfort. It's a comfort watch. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's got its place. It's good, but it's like, is it the best? I don't know. But so, I guess that leads us to like the the last topic that we want to talk about tonight. So, as you know, today is Tuesday. Tuesday. And it's the Tuesday after Super Bowl, but before Valentine's. And there's a lot of movies that are about to drop, a lot of movies that are coming out for 2024, and their advertising finally launched, kicked off big time by dropping some trailers during the Super Bowl or right around the Super Bowl. Well, we're a channel that talks about movies in a minivan, so what we want to do is... Drop down the screen, man, get a minivan, and watch some trailers. So we're not going to do it right now, but expect it sometime this week or next week where we want to watch some of those trailers and do some live reactions to talk about what those movies are and what's going on. So I'm curious. I have done really good at staying away from all of the hype, all of the noise, I know some of the trailers have come out, but I have not watched anything. Yeah. Uh, what What are some of the trailers that you're really like hyped about? So uh, we have some trailers that we've already seen together in theaters, so yeah. we're not going to go over those because we've already watched them. Uh, one that I'm really excited about, I love, love, love the first movie, and I enjoyed the second one, A Quiet Place Day One. Okay. That's one that uh, is definitely going to be a theater movie. With what they're gonna oh, do absolutely. with the audio and sound. I'm a John. I'm a John K fan. Yeah. So I'm, We're I'm, in the fan I'm, club. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be there. Uh, I'm really sad he's not gonna be Reed Richards. That is like that's a terrible choice. Come on. That is Marvel. Maybe one of my you know so saddest like saddest days. Of course, the biggest one. There's already a ton of reaction videos, ton of breakdown videos. Is Deadpool and Wolverine. Oh yeah. So we now have a title <laughs> for that Deadpool movie, not Deadpool three, but Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, which I think, you know, everybody can get behind. Oh, yeah. Uh, Wicked, another one. Anybody that's a theater lover, theater goer. Uh, me and my wife have seen it, the the Broadway show. I loved Wicked. Uh, it's a very good one. Wizard of Oz, we all grew up watching it. In school, they made us watch it a million times. I can say this confidently as, as a man. I have seen... <laughs> they asked, have you guys ever seen Fight Club? Oh, you, of course, a, a million times. What is that? Is that about? Is that the Flight Club? Is that yeah. like? A, is that a disc golf movie? It's a, yeah, it's a dance off, dance off to save Flight the Club. Um, is that is that on Delta? Delta Airlines a club. exclusive. That's an oh, Flight country. Club. That's the sequel to Snakes on a Plane, or or Soul Plane, or to with uh, Cat Williams uh, and Snoop Dogg. What was the one with the ducks? The vacation movie, the Flight Club. Oh yeah, Migration to Flight Club. Yep, gotta get in. No, no, yep. Uh, uh, Twisters. So wait, wait, hold on back up. On, on the topic of Wicked, uh, I can say this as a straight, heterosexual, white, cisgendered male. Cis. I have seen Wicked 
Four times. Four times. On stage. Two, Two times I've seen it center orchestra. Uh, I've seen Wicked a lot. I actually took my wife this past year in June to see it. I'm really excited about this movie. Other than the fact that it's probably going to suck. Yeah. Well, it's the first, it's not, it's the first like Broadway not, show I ever saw. So it was like my introduction to that. I didn't grow up going to theater. And so like watching that, uh, I enjoyed it. I was like, oh, this isn't like lame like I thought it was growing up. Like who would go watch a, a musical? It, it's actually a really fun storyline uh, that anybody can kind of appreciate and, and participate in. Uh, the next one is Twisters. Uh, that one is going to be starring um, Glenn Powell of uh, Top Gun Maverick fame, as we all know and love. And then uh, If. The oh, yeah. I'm excited. Another Star John K movie. Uh, and I believe that's the those were the only new ones. We've seen the other trailers, like the new pla King of the Kingdom of the Planet of the Air. I haven't movie. seen it. We watched. We saw it in theaters. The trailer. I I was must have gone to the bathroom. Eyes, uh, <laughs> Inside Out two. I I haven't seen the trailer for it. Okay, well we can watch. I've them seen. If you've I've seen just it. seen the. I know it's coming out because I, I marked out like uh, is this is coming out this year. Despicable Me four, Kung Fu, Kung Fu Panda four. I saw that one. I've got uh, I've got kids. I'm, they're all ready. Uh, and then they call the, them commercials. The Fall yeah. Guy. We've seen the trailer for. Oh that yeah, I'm, ex I'm excited about that one. Hey, uh, I'm curious. Out how he's gone now, but. I want to know why 916 wants to know about Fight Club. Okay, I'll, I'll log in and ask him. But I'm curious as to what, what's going on there. That'd be interesting to see why someone would ask about Fight Club now. Just because. That's because we talked about it. We weren't supposed to. He left. Oh, yeah. Number one rule about Fight Club. You he's don't like, talk these about guys it. Clearly, I've not seen <laughs> Fight Club. Like, Let me get out of here. I mean, if, if this guy could see my arms, he'd probably understand He'd be like, that I've, I've been a part of we've Fight all Club. We've been a part of Fight Club for, for a long, long time. I'm freaking jacked. I'm a pretty, pretty big dude. I probably don't look it right now because you know the, the camera it can be a little bit deceiving when you're sitting in in, in the movie club minivan. My seat is so low, right now, like I have to because otherwise I, I couldn't fit into the van. Uh, but me, I am actually quite tall. Move this back up to where it's supposed to be like to normal. So like this is where I would normally sit if I was sitting normally. In a van. Yeah, like, he's like seven foot tall. I'm not quite seven foot tall, but I'm a, I'm not, I'm not far. I'm probably like six, seven on a good day. Really more like six, six. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's just me. My, my mom's really short, but my dad had a lot of hype. So, uh, I'd be interested to know why someone talked about Fight Club out of nowhere. Uh, since the number one rule is not to talk about it. But it is obviously a great movie. I was reading a funny article the other day about Edward Norton and how when he was, you know, picked to play in uh, Primal Fear, mm. which is an awesome, Very good. awesome movie. Uh, go watch it if you haven't seen that one. Um, he was such an unknown actor that they didn't, the studio didn't believe that he would be that good in it. But just in case he was good, they signed a three-year deal with him. While he was filming Primal Fear, he did Fight Club. And then he popped off, got nominated for the Oscar for Primal Fear, nominated for the Oscar for Fight Club, but didn't win it. I should have won it for sure. that one. Uh, just awesome, awesome movie. And a really good book, too. Side note, go go check out the book. Primal Fear or Fight Club? Fight Club and Primal Fear. <laughs> Both of them are really good. Um, dude, everyone's a really good actor, really good at selecting the source material. Uh, well, he did a second movie. I forget what the movie was. Uh, but he didn't like it. And then Edward Norton was told by the, like the production company, dog, you got to do a third movie or we're going to sue you. So they made him do the Italian job. Oh, wow. And he said, I'm not going to be, I don't want to do this movie. I don't want to do this movie. So like the character that he plays, that snarky, sneery guy, that's not an act. That is actually... Him, how pissed off he that's was. how he was on the set. And what's funny is like that's actually maybe one of the better parts of the movie. Yeah, is not like Mark Wahlberg's character or Charlize Theron. It's Edward Norton being a sneery asshole, and like is, they're like he, that's how he was. That's all. That's all it takes. You just really <laughs> have to piss off an actor to get him uh, to participate well in, in in your film. Yeah, but I mean, in Fight Club, awesome. Oh, American History X is the other movie that okay. like obviously very well beloved. 
uh, super amazing, dark, dark movie. Literally black and white, but yeah. also a very heavy. I heavy would not movie. watch it if you got a... Uh, great for like, date night. Great yeah. for a family movie Valentine's night with the Day. kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, American History. History X. It's like Sesame Street. If you, uh, but for history. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, is that it's one about movie. Malcolm X? Or is that a different... I uh, think it's about different X. Uh, Professor Xavier. Oh, he is bald. It's, a, it's like a prequel to uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. And he does shave his head for that one. So. Yeah, so if you like X-Men Origins, you're going to love American History X. All right. And then we just got canceled. No, 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 no jokes allowed here. No jokes, no American History X's, and no uh, Fight Clubs. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, I guess that's going to kind of bring our, our, our screen to a bit of an end. Uh, again, shout out to... Cinnabourbon and the hookup on the Russell's Reserve. Very good. Uh, let us know if this was interesting to you. If it was interesting, then maybe we'll keep doing it. Uh, but the goal is just to have more of a ongoing dialogue, ongoing conversation about movies and, clubs. and about the stories that we enjoy doing. Uh, look out for some of those new videos that we're going to drop. And it would be really helpful to us if you'd give us a like, give us a subscribe, Give us all the, the social media's attentions. Uh, you can find Nick on social media. You can find me on social media at Minivan Brett uh, yeah. because I have a minivan. I'm Nick Minivan Movie Club. So. Yep. so you can find us there and drop us a comment on either a bourbon that you've tried or a movie that you've seen because you just heard from us, Russell's Reserve, Vengeance, and Argyle. What's the next movie we're going to see? The movie everybody's got to see, and that's Madam Web. If you want to know how the Spider Verse is going to shake out, did you see the picture of? I don't know. I'm bringing this up because of she's not in Madam Web, but she's in Dune Part Two, which is coming out, and she's the boyfriend to Spy, <laughs> the girlfriend to Spider Man. Uh, did you see a picture of Zendaya here. in France for like the world premiere of Dune Part not, Two? Nope, nope. She looks like Tom Holland. That's look it up. Disturbing. All right, look up. I think it's what she looks like in in France. And tell me that she doesn't look like Tom Holland. It is uncanny. Like, you know how you read articles about, like, uh, people that have dogs and they start hanging out with their dog. So they, like, oh, wow, this dog looks like them or they look like their dog. I think Zendaya, this one right here. Zendaya is starting to look like Tom Holland. Oh, that's disturbing. You can't tell me. And I know I'll, I'll probably get some hate. So I'm like, you can't say that about Zendaya. She's royalty. She's the queen. She's important. But don't you hate when your phone does this? It like skips. She's turning into Tom. It's Tom Holland. Show, the, got, show the photo. She got Tom face. It's the it's the one with all the extra makeup and hair stuff on her face. It's one to act up on me. Starting to look like Tom, dog. Tom. Couples turn into each other over time. I don't know why it just showed down to her leg, but whatever. So you're telling me my wife is going to get super tall? Yeah, super tall, wow. great mustache. Yeah. I had to trim down my mustache. I had to go to a passport meeting this week. Um, so the last time I had sure I my passport, mind, uh, I had a big mustache on my on my passport. So when I trimmed it down, uh, I was going through places like, this isn't you. This is your brother. And I was like. You think I got here using my brother's passport? No. No. So I had to trim back a little bit, but I'm, I'm hoping to get back in the game before summer. You going to get back in the, the big, big beer game? Nope. I like, I like this COVID link. killed it? I can't, you know, when you can roll over on it, that's when it's too dangerous. So I, like <laughs> it. I like it this length. I got to get a haircut too because I'm starting to get all my, my gray hairs in here. Oh, yeah. I've got one gray hair over here. I don't want to say my, I don't like saying my beard, especially on camera with you because... Like, here we are in the dark. It looks like where, like, you, your face disappears. Yeah. But for me, I don't really have a beard. I just have facial hair. I have, like, one gray hair over here. But on the sides of my head, I have lots of gray. It's coming in. That's, That's the I mean, It is your name. But I've, had, I've had gray hair for a long, long time since I was born. Every hair on your head but has gray hair. But now it's starting to turn that color. And that is problematic because it means I'm getting older. And when you get older, you die. Yeah, so I think for me, I'm I'm excited about Madam Web. I think that's going to be a, a fun one to see. 
I don't expect it to be very good. No, I think it'll be a fun one to make fun of. But I'm I'm excited to go see it. But I I love going to the movies. Yeah. And I think that was part of the part for me where like watching Vengeance. I was like, man, I would have liked to have seen this one in the theater. So I would have liked to have supported it in theater. Yeah, I, I wish I could. I wish there was a way that I could give some money to it, just so that it would be represented and like, oh, this is so future projects like that could get greenlit. There's a funny thing about that. If you send that money to my Venmo, it'll go straight to <laughs> the, the Vengeance Foundation. So yeah, so for those of you that are curious, <laughs> send the money to at R Brett Gray. R <laughs> as in uh, Ryan from The Office. There you go. That's how they're send, connected. Send it to R Brett Gray on Venmo and we will personally make sure that it gets sent to More the, projects the, will get funded. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. yep. All right, that's going to do it for our live stream today. Uh, we're going to buckle up. Side note, uh, we're not drinking alcohol on the road. We're in the minivan, but we're in my garage. Yeah, we're parked. So we're parked. Car's not on. Keys aren't even in the car. So if there was a cop here, no harm, no foul. Uh, we're in the leisure of our home. Uh, but that's the story for another day. Yep. So I guess we'll see you down the road. Peace. This is the awkward part of the stream where I can't get out of it. You're like, all right. So he's in the stream uh, for Bye.